Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We have a very special treat for y'all today. I have with me today, Dr. Candace Good, author of her newly released book, Own Your Present, A Psychiatrist's Guide to Mindful Meditation and Living a More Conscious Lifestyle. Today, Candace will be doing a short reading from her book. Candace, to start us off, can you please introduce yourself and your book to our audience? Sure, I'm Candace Good. I'm a, a practicing psychiatrist, an MD. I have always been a very busy person dealing with a lot of stress. And at some point I got very depleted. So when I started practicing mindfulness, I started to feel better and more creative. So I wrote a book about my experiences. Here it is, own your present. <laughs> Um, one thing that a lot of high achieving people deal with, in addition to stress and anxiety, is something called imposter syndrome. And I realize you recently did a writing workshop about that, um, which I watched and appreciated. So I'm actually chose to read from a later part of my book. So my book talks a lot about how mindfulness can help you be in the present moment and then have more gratitude and appreciation for yourself. And that can really carry over into other places and showing up um, as a leader. So should I go ahead? Yes, go ahead and start. And I love that you're covering imposter syndrome because I feel like, especially with the pandemic going on, it's impacted our mental health a lot. And so kind of breaking through those barriers and ensuring that you are enough, you are doing your best. And, you know, it's just, it's a stigma in your head that's preventing you from thinking of yourself as this high achieving person. Yeah, and a lot of people don't see themselves as a writer. Sometimes it's even hard still for me to call myself a writer. And having a published book in the world doesn't really change that. So a lot of it is about mindset. So the fact you're dealing with uh, helping writers with that is great. Um, so there is no shortage of books and TED Talks on imposter syndrome, a phenomenon named by Drs. Langford, Clance, and Imes in the 1970s. They describe that imposters, primarily women, often discount their accomplishments. Imposters don't view their actions and achievements as special. And if they do, they attribute them to luck. In their mind, those around them just haven't uncovered their flaws yet. Any mistake or less than perfect action is a risk of being exposed as a fraud instead of celebrating accomplishments imposters feel they don't deserve to be there. I still catch myself describing my first leadership role in academic medicine in a passive way. I fell into the role of medical director or I was in the right place at the right time. The role was open because a physician accepted a position at another institution, but if I was not qualified, I would not have gotten the job. 10 years later, I became a unit director and department chair. I stepped up during a difficult transition for the group practice. I wasn't a reticent leader, but because I wasn't gunning for the position, I minimized my accomplishments and told myself anyone could have done it. I assure you I struggled, but so would anyone else given the hospital culture at the time and limited resources. Leadership is brave. It's a job that's learned by stepping up to the mic to sing, even if you haven't perfected every note. Young professionals may avoid a leadership role, thinking they must spend many hours mastering the skills for multiple certifications. But a certificate doesn't make you an expert. Likewise, an MBA doesn't guarantee a great leader. Leadership starts with listening and sharing an experience, staying in the moment. I'd like to focus on ladies for a few paragraphs because women still only make up a fraction of CEOs, administrators, and leaders in most professional organizations. Many relate this lack of female leadership to the burden of maternity leave, childcare, or household chores. True, but if I accept that women are choosing to spend more time with family, does that mean I love my family less when I serve on a committee? or accept the role of department chair. I propose that the real reason is that as women, our perfectionism overshadows our confidence and our leadership skills. We hesitate before speaking up. What if it's not good enough for the boardroom? We didn't get the same exposure to professional mentors 
and any programs during our educational careers focused on work-life balance and networking to get to the next step, not what to do when she got there. Be nice is the mantra we're taught from a young age. We're told to be a team player who values sharing and caring for others. We run around trying to do everything with smiles on our faces and wonder why no one is pitching in to help. For me, mindfulness has been the key to staying present in stressful conditions and in deciding how to spend my emotional energy. I can say, nope, no thanks, without people's heads exploding. Who knew? Today, I have more tolerance for uncomfortable situations and no longer view myself as the source of other people's distress. Most days, that is. Yoga is a practice after all. Decisions will be made. Women need seats at the table. I often recall the meme of a bunch of dogs sitting around a boardroom table for a meeting on feline health care. The photo is a commentary on the need for more women in leadership positions as men are drafting legislation that impacts female reproductive rights. Any cat that shows up to such a meeting, even a scaredy cat, is brave. Most cats would be on edge in a room full of dogs, and we wouldn't question why. If you are in a room and you realize you are the only one of your kind, feeling scared or uncomfortable is not a weakness. Being aware of your surroundings and showing up, even when you feel out of place, is brave. Mindfulness practice can make you feel like a cat among dogs sometimes, but that's okay. In those situations, your practice isn't failing. Your amygdala is keeping you alert. Your insula will kick in soon. The middle road will keep you present. So your best thinking will be yet to come. Your presence is something special in this scattered world, and it's incredibly brave to share it with others. Note that you need not lead a yoga class to teach the world about yoga. Noticing your own emotions and managing them while still attending to others is powerful wherever you go. Modeling this behavior is mindful leadership. I love that so much. I love that excerpt. And it's so it's such a powerful message too, especially, you know, within the current climate and everything like that. And that was actually one of my favorite passages from the book is when you discuss that. And especially, you know, for women and women in leadership, like you noted, there are just so few of us. And we often, you know, discount ourselves um, because it's our in our nature to do so when we shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really think about when I chose that passage, how timely it is, given that we now have most likely a, a female vice president. And um, also, I think a lot of people will turn to mindfulness because they just want to survive the stress that they're experiencing. But I think a lot of us don't just want to survive. We want to, we want to thrive. And that's where being present and feeling comfortable with yourself really helps you step out. Definitely. And I've integrated a lot of the tactics you talked about in your book um, into my day to day to day life. And it's really helped improve, you know, my clarity and me being in the moment and expressing gratitude every day. And it's definitely helped. Um, I would say my productivity as well. Great. I, I do notice that one of the benefits is when my mind's not as scattered and I'm not constantly reacting to everything even though it feels like I must be doing less, I'm, I'm actually doing more because I'm able to do it with um, a connection and efficiency that I couldn't before. Absolutely. Well, if you guys want to purchase Candace's book, Candace, where can they buy your book? It's available through on all online booksellers. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you, Candice, for that excellent reading. It's something we all really needed to hear. The link to purchase Own Your Present will be in the footnotes of this video. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And thank you again, Candice, for joining us today. Thank you.